Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. On this Veterans Day, students in one Siouxland school district hear the first-hand account of a local veteran and also get the chance to meet his special companion. And as KCAU 9 News reporter Marina Bach explains, today's event highlights not just the contribution service members make to our country, but the help they often need once they return home. It's our top story right now at 6. Tim and Sophie, during Jason Carroll's time in the Army, who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He retired in 2012, but his road to transitioning back home has been a bumpy one. Back in August, he was gifted a new ally through the nonprofit organization Partners for Patriots. Veteran Jason Carroll says this four legged friend saved his life. Delta's responsibility. She is trained to lay on me at night when I start having nightmares and flashbacks. Carol suffers from a traumatic brain injury as well as anxiety and depression. She stays by my side 24-7. As you can see, she likes to lay on me. She lays on my feet. To, uh, it's a calming for me. Basically, my energy is going through her body and it's calming me down. But his message to students is simple. No one in here is man enough or woman enough to not ask for help. He says his goal is to help open the door to more conversations around mental illness. You can get overwhelmed with sports and school, and I understand that at this age, um, as does just about everybody, so uh, I just can't imagine what it's like to be in the military just trying to hold on to that burden and, and overcome that. Carol says Delta is a beacon of light on his journey throughout life outside of the military. Having a dog can combat that loneliness of not being in the military anymore and I feel it's very important for disabled veterans to have a dog. Each service dog is gifted to a veteran through the Partners for Patriots program but the dog comes with a price tag around $8,000 but a veteran never pays a bill for the dog or the training. The lack of dogs that we have for the amount of uh, service members in need um, that was kind of shocking so that just really shows the need of people to step up and donate and, uh, and help out when they can. The MMCRU school district is doing a coin drive to help pay for another service dog for a military veteran that is on that waiting list. And if you'd like to help Partners for Patriots, it's always looking for monetary donations as well as a new dog to train. And if you're interested, we'll have a link on our website. That's SiouxLandProud.com to contact the program. Marina Bach, KCAU 9 News. All right, thanks, Marina. A socially distant ceremony bringing veterans of all branches to the Woodbury County Courthouse today. The Woodbury County Commission on Veterans Affairs sponsoring the event to recognize those who served. Veterans of the Marine Corps League, Siouxland Detachment 507, and others were in attendance. I won't get into how many brothers and sisters I lost overseas, but I lost a bunch. And yet all this is is a recognition to them. And, you know, other than that, I just appreciate when people thank me for the service. Steve Hanner, also known as Greeny, says together or socially distant, a salute to veterans will always feel special to him. Across the river at Siouxland Freedom Park in South Sioux City, another ceremony marking this special day. The event featuring the presentation of colors, a firing party, and the playing of taps. For those who weren't able to attend in person, this ceremony was streamed online. While well, those on hand were encouraged to maintain social distance and wear masks. And compared to yesterday, today, <laughs> the perfect kind of day to have a celebration as we did. At least they had some sunshine. It was crispy, though. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson for a look at your forecast. It was brisk out there today, Tim and Sophie, but it was nice to have that sunshine and coupled with some slightly warmer temperatures, we were able to start to melt off some of that fresh blanket of snow. The official high temperature in Sioux City today getting up to 38 degrees. That after three inches of snow fell yesterday, 37 in Cherokee, 42 in Yankton and 41 in Norfolk. We had a pretty long streak of above average temperatures. Of course, that changed yesterday with a high of 32 and today just a little warmer at 38. Road conditions now are in pretty good shape. Just make sure that you are being careful today. Since we did melt some snow, we could have things refreeze on the roads tonight. We'll have some more details on a chance of seeing a few flakes fly around Siouxland tomorrow. That's all in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. 
Thanks, Scott. Well, one Siouxland couple continues going above and beyond for their community even after they're retired. Lynn Armantrout serving 27 years and her husband, Bob, serving 15 years in the U.S. Air Force. The couple worked alongside one another while serving in Afghanistan. While in Afghanistan, Lynn was in charge of a special mission on the operational side. Bob was charged with supporting the larger Air Force mission. But they say their greatest memories together are today now, during their retirement from the military, now serving Siouxland veterans with support Siouxland soldiers. We do a lot with the Elks, uh, the soup kitchen, and we just, all those serve veterans in different capacities. KCAU 9 News reporter Marina Bach returns later to give us the full story tonight at 10. Meanwhile, veterans in Vermilion, South Dakota have a new space to call all their own. The University of South Dakota dedicating a Patriots Plaza to local veterans, including late Sioux City native Colonel George Bud Day. That plaza located now at the center of the campus in Vermilion. The ceremony taking place inside today, though, because of our recent snowy weather. That plaza commemorates alumni and those who have served in the military. The dedication recognizing all veterans and reminding folks of the lives that have been lost. As a student here in 2004, I wish we'd had something like this where I could walk by and see every day, uh, not only recognizing the service of veterans past, but also thinking and reflecting on the service that I'm about to embark upon. United States Representative from South Dakota, Dusty Johnson, one of the many featured speakers at today's ceremony. Meanwhile, as Iowa reports more than 4,000 new cases of coronavirus for the fifth day in a row, 92 counties reporting a two-week average positivity rate of at least 15%. So that dangerous mark of the seven counties with a positivity rate of less than 15%, just Ringgold County has a positivity rate below 10%. Five of the 10 counties with the highest averages in northwest Iowa, it's Calhoun, Ida, Lynn, Plymouth, and Sioux counties. The county with the highest positivity rate is currently Jones. That's in Eastern Iowa with nearly 45 percent. Let's take a quick look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County health officials tonight reporting two additional deaths in the past 24 hours along with 89 new cases. 56 patients currently in hospital with coronavirus. Meanwhile, Sioux County has surpassed the 3,000 total case mark. Here's the update from Nebraska and in Dakota County. 15 new positive tests today. The county there now recorded 2,800 total cases. And in South Dakota, Yankton County reporting 391 active cases. Clay County lists 223. Well, the country music capital is in the spotlight tonight for the Country Music Awards. That's right. Now, the biggest night in Nashville is shaping up to be just a little different from years past. We'll explain coming up. And some light snow showers are expected overnight as we go into tomorrow. Expecting to have some warmer weather this weekend as we melt away the snow. Your 9 on 9 forecast right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Well, did you wear your sunglasses today? I did. I did too. Uh, but too. also my snow boots because it's still only <laughs> it's in the good, 30s. It's a good combo. You had to wear glasses today, Scott. It was bright out there. Very bright, especially considering all of the ice that was sticking to grass and trees. Really uh, made quite for a scene out there when you consider all of the sunshine that we had. We'll look outside here on the Ho Chunk Center camera in downtown Sioux City. Still maintaining those clear skies at the moment, but cloud cover is expected to work in overnight. And with that, the chance of a few flurries and light snow showers as we move through the morning hours of Thursday. Here's the Almanac Fort State. It displays that the high temperature this afternoon was 38 and the low temperature from this morning at 14. Definitely was a frosty start. We had some areas of fog earlier on today. Here's a look at where temperatures stand now. You can see that those are in the 20s and 30s for most. A little bit warmer as you move into the west and the south. For Tim and Sophie. Thanks, Scott. What a roller coaster ride. Uh, our forecast Indeed. the coming nine days. Well, Sioux Landers can still attend a ceremony in honor of Veterans Day at a local landmark tonight. Due to COVID-19, the JROTC is holding its vigil and flag ceremony at the Sergeant Floyd Monument. It got started at 8 o'clock this morning and it doesn't end until 8 o'clock this evening. That's right. You can hear from local veterans in this digital exclusive story because it's on our website right now. That's at SiouxLandProud.com or click on this story in the KCAU 9 News app.
country artist heading to Nashville tonight for the annual CMAs, but there will be some changes at the event. We have a preview of tonight's CMAs from Nashville coming up next. Well, country music's biggest night of the year is here. It's the Country Music Association Awards, and it will be in Nashville once again, but there will be a few changes, of course, because of the pandemic. To be expected, Josh Breslow is in Nashville tonight with a look at what we can expect and what the stars are saying. This year's CMA Awards will look a lot different than in years past. The event is not open to the public, the stars won't walk the red carpet, and for the first time ever, the ceremony moves away from Bridgestone Arena. If you, want change, fancy, don't let me down. If you fancy some Reba. One of country music's biggest stars takes center stage as host of the CMAs for the second year in a row. This time, Reba teams up with Darius Rucker, or should we call him Hootie? This is Hootie's first time to co-host the CMA Awards, but this is an international superstar. You're going to be great. You're We're going to have a blast. blast. She's going to carry me. We're going to have a blast. <laughs> After more than a decade of hosting, Carrie Underwood will sit this one out. The American Idol alum is still up for the top prize, though. One person she won't compete against, Garth Brooks. After his seventh win, the reigning Entertainer of the Year took his name out of the running. It's time for somebody else hold that award, know what that entertainer feels like. And because uh, they're all at their bus in their butts. Up for seven trophies at this year's ceremony, Miranda Lambert leads the pack for most nominations. It means the world to me. It puts a fire under me, honestly, to keep going and do more and do better. One more than another Entertainer of the Year hopeful, Luke Combs. It's an honor to just even be considered and, and mentioned in the same sentence as some of those people. With a new name, Lady A, a staple in the vocal group of the year category, hopes for their first win in nearly a decade. I mean, to be honored really just validates that we're all working hard during this unprecedented time and doing the best we can uh, with this wild world in front of us. This year's show at the Music City Center will open with a tribute to the late Charlie Daniels. We've also learned that two artists who were set to perform won't be able to take the stage because they have tested positive for COVID-19. That's Tyler Hubbard with Florida Georgia Line and Lee Bryce. Reporting in Nashville, I'm Josh Breslow. And that all gets started at 7 o'clock tonight. And you've been in person Last year, before. as a matter of fact, but it was much different than of this course. year. That is for sure. Following our newscast, uh, again, you can catch the great night of entertainment from Nashville. Again, as I say, it gets started at 7 o'clock right here on KCAU 9. Well, the Nebraska volleyball team had a signing class for the ages. Jake explains how the Huskers might be a top team sooner rather than later. Coming up in sports. Here's something interesting. Students at an Indiana middle school recently weren't the only ones to arrive just in time for class. Teachers were already there when a deer came bounding through, <laughs> breaking right into the school building. Local oh, wow. police department there, animal control, all had to be called in. So interesting, the deer broke through the top half of the window and police busted out the bottom window so the deer could escape on its own volition. Smart escape plan. The deer was in the building for roughly 45 minutes and had to be tranquilized while in there. No one was harmed, but the classroom was quite a mess. When deer get spooked, uh, there's, there's really no stopping them. It's like a bull in a china shop. Think about all the desks, you know, trying to get... <laughs> I'd imagine it was a mess. Makes sense. I imagine so. Maybe he was just trying to get out of the cold. And uh, we're going to have a chilly night here on hand. Yeah, pretty cold out there tonight, Sophie. We should see our temperatures fall down into the 20s. As it looks like we'll have some increasing clouds, the potential for some light snow showers and flurries, especially along and north of Highway 20. Tomorrow, a high temperature of 34 in the afternoon. We'll start the day off with a couple of light snow showers, and it looks like we'll end it with sunny skies. 40 on Friday. Going through the weekend, temperatures warm up further and it looks like we'll have highs in the 50s and eventually 60s for next week with no major chances of any rain or snow. Some hometown college football this weekend I think so that 45 will be nice. Yeah pretty agreeable. Well thank you for joining us we'll all see you back here at 10. Have a great night. Good night.